Hello, uh, we're looking at the specimen of a kidney here. And the surface that we're looking at is the cut surface showing the pelvic caliceal system. And this is the renal cortex, and this area would be the medulla. Flipping it around, we are looking here at the capsular surface. Now, there are abnormalities on both surfaces. Let's have a look at the cut surface first. So if I were to magnify this area, we can see the pelvic caliceal system over here. And uh, just uh, in the cortex leading into the medulla, we can see these white, yellowish white streaky areas of discoloration. Now what this is microscopically is the presence of purulent material or neutrophils and necrotic cellular debris within the renal tubules and also within the interstitium. This is an example of a microscopic view where you can see the neutrophils uh, in the cast within a renal tubule. So this explains the gross appearance of the streakiness. So back to the gross specimen, that's what we are seeing. Now, we also saw some uh, areas of uh, discoloration within the interstitium that are not conforming to the tubular outlines. Let's take a look now at the capsular surface. And uh, what we're looking at here, you see all these pale, spotty areas. These are all micro abscesses that are just subcapsular, just below the capsule. Most of them will be within the interstitium or in the tubules. Um, and this is a classical appearance of acute pyelonephritis. In a fresher example of the kidney, this is what it would look like. And you can see all these little micro abscesses uh, in the subcapsular region. So clinically, these patients would usually suffer from systemic symptoms of infection as well as flank pain and also some urinary symptoms. And this can eventually actually lead to some complications including acute renal failure as well as septicemia. And how does this arise? Most of the time, this is due to a bacterial infection that is more frequently from an ascending um, infection that spreads upwards from the bladder. For example, if there is lower urinary tract obstruction uh, due to, say, an enlarged prostate or an obstructing tumor or even reflux. And this can be exacerbated by conditions such as diabetes. And less frequently, this is due to hematogenous spread.